I've watched both of you start your podcast journey at the Confused Breakfast. Caterpillars in a cocoon of stability. It's just inherently wrong, but I'll go with it. Over the last three years, your chrysalis has hardened. And now if I listen closely, I can almost hear your cocoons opening. I see before me monarch butterflies mm-hmm. ready to take off into that great adventure that I like to call life. Well, hello there. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Sure do. Uh, It's really hard to beat that ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. Yeah, buddy. But there was something truly special about heading to Blockbuster, picking out a movie by hand, and watching it when you got home from being blue-balled by your high school girlfriend. Nice. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes who would rather die than get kissed by a greasy buff bro from California, Sean Pryor and AJ Vance. How the heck are you? I just, you know, it's just my preference. Yeah, I'm you're sorry. allowed that. That's yeah, fine. You know. It's okay. I mean, it's like, hey, I, I don't, you know, nobody has to kiss anybody that they don't want to. Right. Yeah. I think that's an important thing to distinguish. Yeah. 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 It's a good thing that this movie teaches us that. <laughs> but you know, if, if you, you learn anything from this movie, it's that. <laughs> it, but hey, I mean, if it's hot enough. I mean, if it, we had a good connection, I it's mean, true. no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you know, if we, you know, if he, if his favorite movie was uh, <laughs> Son-in-Law, there will be blood or uh, whatever. <laughs> I'd be like, All right, we can make out. Hey, you know what? Let's try something. <laughs> Well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss the highest rated Pauly Shore movie of the 90s. And for good reason. On IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, Pauly Shore's first movie with a leading role, a movie with one of the more accurate depictions of small town Midwest I've ever seen. Mm. A true Thanksgiving classic. Gobble, gobble. (laughs) We're, of course, talking about 1993's Son-in-Law. Well, damn, dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. There's no symbol. Sean. Take it away, boys. I, know, I want there to be so bad. Well, if you are new to this podcast, it's the greatest podcast ever created in the entire world. Welcome. You're uh, going to listen to every episode and be in trance from here on out. But for today on this episode, we're going to be reviewing Son-in-Law. From 1993, modern day, scene by scene, to see if it holds up. (laughs) In order to do that properly, though, we got to talk about it with nostalgia. I'm going to start with AJ. Tell us the first time you saw this movie, what your nostalgic rating is, was of this movie. I saw this movie. I believe it had to have been on TV. I think. I think it had to be on TV. I, seeing this movie was not something I had any interest in seeing. I was like, whatever. I was like, oh, is it Stony like Encino Man? Because I knew Encino Man. And then I saw like there was this. And then I I was just like, it's boring. It's boring. It's like I don't even know what's going on. Like, oh he's on a farm. Oh, fish out of water. Oh. Even though I didn't really know that concept <laughs> as a kid. You didn't actually say that I didn't concept. actually say that concept, but in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, it's like he's he's put in a situation that he's kind of uncomfortable with. Ugh. But he's never been in. He's never we'll been see in. see if he oh, makes man, it. Let's see if how it goes. Will he uh, adapt? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? We'll just have to watch and find out. Ugh. <laughs> so. I wish there was a term for that. There's only a term that could be used. Uh, it's like it's like a cow out of pasture. I don't know. Wait till I meet my friend Sean Pryor in the future. He'll tell me. <laughs> He'll tell me everything I need to know about these things. So, anyways, guys, was not was I just didn't care about it that much. And it was always around this time of year, though, that I feel like it was on, and I had no idea why. And uh, it was probably TBS or USA or oh, something you know. along those lines. Oh yeah, it was probably something with some Polly Shore. I bet Jury Duty was on before or after this. Yeah, and that was it. And but I just didn't have any. Like the the small town living, since I knew about it enough, I'm like, oh yeah, farms and stuff. Oh <laughs> yeah, let's see how you do that. I didn't give a shit. So, I'm honestly, I'm gonna give this a 
I'm going to give this a a, a 4.45. 4.45. Sean, what about you, man? Uh, I watch this movie all the time with my dad. Uh, this would be like on rotation with uh, Saving Silverman and stuff like that. There are certain parts of this movie that we would just religiously rewind because we found them so funny, which I'll get into later. Um, loved this movie. Loved Polly Shore. Loved Encino Man at the time. I'm going to give this 7.9. 7.9. I didn't see this one. Uh, I didn't see it right away. Like I was, I was a biodome and Cino man kind of a guy right off the bat. But for some reason, I hadn't. I did, son-in-law maybe didn't hit me until like the mid 2000s. Maybe the first time I saw yeah. it. Yep. Same. And at that point, you had this like we'll talk about it later. But this Pauly Shore like yeah, Pauly Shore yeah, you know like <laughs> the, yeah. he's no good yeah. So I kind of had that mentality of watching it, and it was just. It wasn't my Pauly Shore movie, you know, like, so I, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to give it a 5.5. So nostalgically, fellas, we are a 5.95 on the nostalgic meter, okay. which is pretty low. We're talking about uh, we're going to go just above Stand By Me, just below GoldenEye in the bottom 20 okay. of how we felt Oof. nostalgically. Again, it doesn't mean anything. I don't even know why we do this segment. Goal and I was that low. Yeah. Nostalgically. Stand by me was pretty low. Christmas vacations right there. Red Dawn, Roger Rabbit, they're all pretty low. Dang. But again, like we said, it doesn't mean a single thing. We're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about this purely from a modern eye at this point. And so we gotta learn all the important details of the movie. There it is. Sean, what you got, man? <laughs> important. Produced by Peter M. Lenkov and Michael Rottenberg. Story by Patrick Clifton, Susan Mark McMartin, and Peter Lenkov. Screenplay by Fax Bear, Adam Small, and Sean Sheps. Cinematography by Peter Deming. He also did Evil Dead 2, Drag Me to Hell. That's his uh, little uh, Sam Raimi stint. Uh, mm -hmm. My Cousin Vinny, Lost Highway, Mulholland Drive. That's his little David Lynch stint. And uh, the recent The Menu, which is a great thriller horror movie. Um, right. Music by Richard Gibbs, edited by Dennis M. Hill. Directed by Steve Rash. He also did Can't Buy Me Love, um, The Whoopi Goldberg Vehicle, Eddie, uh, the third Xenon movie, and most of the American Pie sequels. Just kind of kept getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> like all of, the, all of the non canon American Pie sequels, he directed. The mm. ones that's, that no one's seen? So all the direct okay. to TV. Yep. Gotcha. The ones you saw in Hollywood video that were just sitting on the shelves. You're like, are they still making these? And you went, well, I'm not going to watch it. No. Yeah. American Pie. Double baked. <laughs> <laughs> then American Pie bleh, too. American Pie freshman year of American, pie. <laughs> American Pie freshman year summer pie. American Pie home ec class. <laughs> what? American Pie Canada. Canada. <laughs> American Pie CAD. American Pie European vacation. <laughs> Lost in New York. American Pie. Eep Ninrenanga. American Pie. Spackers. In the Big Apple. American Pies. <laughs> Cast. American Pie. No. <laughs> Polly Shore. Carla Gugino. Lane Smith. Sydney Pickett. Mason Williams. Patrick Renna. Dennis Berkeley. Tiffany Thiessen. Dan Gutierre. Uh, Flea. Adam Goldberg. And Academy Award winner, Brennan Fraser. Brennan Fraser. American Pie. Lost in New York. Lost in New York. <laughs> <laughs> After Encino Man, Polly Shore had signed a two-picture deal with Disney, but was also uh, was was also very interested in a script from New Line, which was basically a comedy version of The Turn of the Screw, where Shore would play an au pair who was taking care of some kids in a mansion for a rich dude. There was a bidding war from Disney and New Line for a new Polly Shore movie. Essentially, Disney bought the script to the au pair movie and contracted Shore into starring in Son-in-Law, which also which was also penned by the writer of Encino Man, Sean Sheps. Mm. Son-in-Law was released on July 2nd, 1993, and on a budget of $8 million to film and make $36.4 million. That's all I got. Thanks, Sean. Now we got to move <laughs> on to AJ. He Not does, much. He Not does much. the research for us. He works really hard. Like while he's driving to the to the recording, he's screenshotting some Amazon reviews. He's like, I forgot to do my ratings and reviews. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets it and he tells them to us. And it's yeah. always a good laugh. What do you got, man? Yeah, he's right. <laughs> There's no way around it. I just I just uh, I love it. 
Green Acres is the place <laughs> for me. Green Acres is uh, something for me. Green Acres have other words. Keep Manhattan. Just give me that <gasps> tomato meter. Gross. One of the best ones yet. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> 32%. <laughs> I looked it up on the way here. <laughs> Splat. Uh, you want to know what, of all the movies we've done, 32% ties this with three ninjas. Good what? company. Per the critics. Wow. Good, the critics. good company. Okay. 59% the audience scored it. That is a spilled popcorn icon. If you guys ever look at IMDb, or I'm sorry, at uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it's a minor inconvenience. That's uh, that's like, uh, oh, dang it, I gotta go refill oh, it now. No. Damn, dang it. But they're saying it's okay. You won't miss much while yes, you're gone. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's deep. Yep. It's a deep cut. Um, five point nine on IMDb. That is tenth from the bottom of any movie we have done on this. That is tied with Cocktail. Um, per fans, man. Per the I, fans. I am D B gotcha. Per am, the fans. I am not in agreeance.com. <laughs> so again, Sean just projecting his feelings. <laughs> wow, dude. Just just not leaving any mystery to the audience on how he feels about this movie. I Ugh. hated it. Ooh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What telegraphing? That's what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> I don't like uh. Chicago Tribune. Jo- <laughs> Joanna Steinmetz. Gave it a 63 out of 100, guys. Okay. Son-in-law is a comedy that outstrips its aspirations. It could so easily be a movie you're embarrassed to be caught laughing at. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I really like that a lot. Um, do you guys want to hear Do you guys want to hear a zero? Of course. Out of 100? Zero. This is from a critic. This Wait, is from a critic. Which is okay. bullshit. Okay, so yeah. So if it was from IMDb or anything yes, like that, that they'd be like, sense. if I could give it a zero, this guy can. This guy has that ability. Okay. Which is absolute. To... I don't care what movie you've seen. It's not a zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just um, want to point that out there. I'm just saying, this is it is a zero out of 100. That means it's also a zero out of one, a zero out of 1,000, and it's even a zero out of zero. <laughs> it's a zero... Guys. Out of everything. Yeah. Zero out of one trillion. If yep. I could give this a negative zero, I would. <laughs> oh, man, but then math would be hard. <laughs> yeah. Tampa Bay Times, Steve Purcell, said Shore's new comedy, <laughs> Son-in-Law, <laughs> proves without question that this MTV maniac is one of the most tedious one-note performers in any branch of show business today. Considering that his brain-addled manner serves as a role model for many teenagers is more offensive than his lack of talent. Also, their son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay, uh, wow. Got literally nothing out of this. Okay. Uh, the Miami Herald also apparently Florida's just not a big fan of this movie. Uh, <laughs> 25 out of 100. It's just as boring and dumb as it sounds. This is the kind of movie that uses a shot of a bare butt as a punchline and thinks having Encino Man's Brendan Fraser, Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser, thank you. Mind you. Mind you. uh, Do a walk-on reenaction of the movie's frog-eating scene is a clever cameo. Uh, It was. (laughs) I think it was. I mean... Was it? TikTok thinks it was. (laughs) Well, I think it was. Um, Shore needs to freshen up his act. That's basically what he goes on to say. Oh, it's fine. Okay. What the fuck ever. Um, do you guys do you guys want happy or do you guys want three or ten? Ten. All right. Polly Shore at his best. Ten out of ten, said yeah. Evan Av. This was in nineteen ninety nine. If you like Polly Shore, you'll love Son in Law. If you hate Polly Shore, then well, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That we need more reviews like it, that. That's the thing. Like, if you hated it, like, well, that's whatever. Because I loved it. This guy didn't book time at a coffee shop at like his favorite table. Got like ten coffees and requested that he get some privacy to the barista so he could write his IMDb. Yes. Yeah, no. He just posts. He's like, hey, I dug it. I mean, hey, you if you did it, that's fine. Like, we can still be friends. That is okay. okay. I'm okay with being friends after you say you don't like it. Love it. I want more from that guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Evan, Evan Av. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. Um, let's go the opposite way. Uh, in 2023, um, 
It's just three out of ten. Stop talking, crawl. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, in a, in Azu in in Azuma, Marion in Azuma Arian. That's what it is. Warning, spoilers. An incredibly bland comedy supported by Polly Shore's annoying acting. I like the setup of this film. A party animal having a romance with a new student. But not only is Carl the living embodiment of irritation, but the writing is so generic that you'd swear he was produced in a factory. Plot points are introduced and are immediately dropped. Carla's lesbian roommate. Uh, Carl's hacking skills. Uh, Carl's nerd life past. Cut from the film. Uh, sometimes I had hope that the, for, I had hope for this rom-com whenever crawl wasn't on screen. I was, it wasn't a competent story that I saw about a young woman dealing with the insecurities of leaving home. But then crawl comes over and it's like, yeah, problems. And your family has problems. And I'm the only genius that can magically fix them. I almost laughed at some, some of the jokes in this movie, but Polly's always, Polly always shows up to kill the comedy with his dying mule voice. Skip this film. Whoa. Zero out of one found that uh, helpful. Okay, so it was like no. Fuck and that you. was a yeah. three out of ten. Um, let's go back. <laughs> right? and then that I'll, was a three out of ten. That was a three out of ten. Uh, like I, I want them to know. I want to know like what they found three out of ten about it. What, what was, was the three? What yeah. was worth your three? Yeah, not just a one. Like that's it, it the existed? thing. <coughs> that's what I think is. I think you really should have a rating system that is zero to two. <laughs> or, or something, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a two. Definitely go watch this movie. And then it's like a one. Eh. It's like, eh. Yeah, like, I don't know. If I you're think bored, you could watch if it. you got time, like, yeah. there was good, there was bad. And then, and then zero. And like, then you I got zero. It. Yeah, I don't don't like this movie. I, I don't recommend seeing it. That's the two thumbs up. Oh, my <gasps> God. Roger <gasps> and Gene were oh! on to something. Ahead of their time. But can you do halves with that? Touch those tips gingerly, Michael. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you guys one more. This is a 10 out of 10, and they said it's a great movie in 2001. This movie was great and funny. Polly is funny. The best-looking girl is all the way Tiffany. She is totally hot in this film, and she proves <laughs> that she can act with this film. This movie is a must-see comedy, and it's uh, not all about Tiffany. Uh, it's a great movie in general, but Tiffany adds the zest to this film. Yeah, you know, because she does her scenes very well, Fuck. and she is all the way sexy. Fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> Gotta love it, man. Fuck yeah, dude! And I think it's really important to note that three out of six people found that helpful. <laughs> well, they did. Of course, they did. <laughs> is she hot? Is she hot? Totally. All right, I'll is check she it hot? out. Yeah, I'll fucking check it out. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's super weird. <laughs> well, boys, as your best friend. Your mentor and the elder statesman of this podcast. I've watched both of you start your podcast journey at the Confused Breakfast. Caterpillars in a cocoon of stability. It's just inherently wrong, but I'll go with it. Over the last three years, your chrysalis has hardened. And now, if I listen closely, I can almost hear your cocoons opening. I see before me monarch butterflies mm -hmm. ready to take off into that great adventure that I like to call life. Here we go. <laughs> that was Sean jerking off a microphone. <laughs> For you listeners out there. <laughs> so scene one, Becca Warner graduates from her small town high school and decided to move to California to attend college. She leaves behind her longtime boyfriend, Travis. Her family, as says Travis. Tra Travis. <laughs> Tra Travis. Travis. Her family goes with her to help move into the dorm. There they meet her resident advisor, Crawl. Guys, never has there been a film that has perfectly depicted small town life before in the 90s. For sure. 30 people in your graduating <laughs> class, yeah. losing your virginity in a barn. Oh, yeah, yeah, this totally. is This is like, if you grew up in a big city, boys and girls, this is what you need to know that you missed out on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Your fault. And it yep. looks like a fairly big town. Just, need, you know, not a lot of high school students. No. <laughs> Maybe a lot of them dropped. Yeah. Dropped out before they even started. Well, some of them went to the Catholic school down the road. Oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, this is the public school. And they right. don't graduate. They uh, just become ministers. Right. Wow, well, that's not true. I, was, I graduated from a Catholic high school. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I also, no. did you know this? I gave the graduation speech uh, at my high school. Did my you really? Year. Were you, were you I was the speaker. valedictorian? <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Nice. My, uh, my class rank, my, I graduated with like 200 kids in my school, and I was like with a... Keep in mind, you with like a three point four GPA, my class rank was like a hundred and fiftieth. 
That's how how smart my class was. They're all doctors and lawyers who have no clue what a podcast is because yeah. they're, they're too busy really, making money and they're saving really lives. smart. But I was voted among class members to give the the speech. And you want to know why? It's not because I was a popular kid. It's not because I was really just awesome. It's not because I was friends with everybody. It's because, because you, you were got dyslexic. everyone drugs. No, not even that. I didn't even do drugs. It was because I was a weird kid that when the first day when I walked into freshman year of, of high school, I, I tied a black shoe, shoelace around my wrist all the way around, made a little inch long thing, and I tied it, and then I never took it off. And then halfway through my high school, I'm like, I never took that off. And I'm like, I should leave it on and cut it off at graduation. And so I cut it off on stage at graduation. But that thing smelled terrible. And that's why they terrible. wanted you to... They were like, he's a cool kid and all, but uh, that's kind of a cool story. Maybe he'll cut off that bracelet on stage. Did oh. you do it? Yeah, I'll, I'll find the video. I'll put it up on the Patreon. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck you yeah. have it on your phone right now, don't you? Yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Small step for man. Giant leap for <laughs> this. leap for high school. For this shoelace <laughs> wristband. I just, I, go, I, I, Joe, go Jesus Christ. Go. Hey, listen, I, I, you know, I thought that was pretty cool that I, I actually have it on video, and I thought it was cool to be able to be the person... That says all the cliche statements to his class on graduation day. Can't wait to see what you do. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> we are the future. We have future in our blood. If you guys are ready, let's go out and make a name for ourselves. That's exactly what graduating it was. class of small towns, small townertons. So it that, that would have been yours. Here's what mine would have been. All of our endings are waiting to begin. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> no. No. Uh-uh. Thank, oh. Thank you. Nobody would have done that. Thank you. Nobody would have done that. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Carla Gugino. Oh, my God. She, I forgot. I love her so much. I forgot that this was her. Like yeah. I, I actually looked it up, dude. So this was like kind of her first big role. And she's got so many credits to her name from here through today, from yeah. from, from this movie to still, today. But still getting them. from here but, or from then yeah, to yeah. Mike Flanagan. Yeah, much. but dude, she never like made that jump into stardom, which I is so weird to me that she seems like one of the most talented working actresses right now that is working with all of the the Mike Flanagan stuff. The we just talked about it. The ha Haunting of Hill House, Bly Manor. Um, House of uh, Usher. House of Usher. Like, she's unreal. And she's great in this, but why didn't she make that, like, jump? I don't know, man. And I, I had even watched this movie back in the day. I had such a huge crush Are on her. Are you kidding and me? She has just not aged at all. I don't know how the fuck she does it. Like, oh, my God. She's still, to this day, gorgeous. And she's super cute in this movie. My God. Yeah. She's 52 currently is her age. Could have fooled me. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that yeah. at all. Um, <laughs> that's that's completely fine. Um, we're going to going to we're going to college, and uh, Daddy comes in to say things of. Well, I don't think I prepared you for the boys out there. It's like you're waiting till now. <laughs> like you're waiting till now. I graduated high school. I've I've been ran through. Okay. okay. <laughs> Dad, Jesus. <laughs> but has she? I don't think no, she has. Think okay. she doesn't sound she has. like she has. But clearly, like it's it's a it's a subtle statement on like actually the big city boys are actually good people and the fucking small town boys are pieces of shit. It's true. Like, yeah. In the end of this, like Dad, you didn't even know your own small town boys. Yeah. yeah. How shitty they are. Like I I feel it feels very uh feels very very strange. And then she she jets out, you know, she takes off her like nightgown thing and she's dressed and yeah. goes out and they don't go anywhere. They just go to the barn in her play at her farm, yeah. family's house. Where are you going to go? In the hay, man. It's yeah. romantic. Take for a roll in the hay. Yeah. And then uh, like they're they're kind of going. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. And it's it's like, no, slow down. It's like we're leaving tomorrow. <laughs> and it's like, do you want to do this or not? And then she's like. They kind of say, they, well, then I'll be back, and you'll be working at the co-op, and I'll be a graduate. And in four years, in we'll four be ready years, to be together. We'll be ready. We'll see each other three times a year. The right way. It's he's a like, lot to ask somebody. He's like, he's like, yeah, promise? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I promise. Now, where were we? Oh, Heavy yeah. petting. My, Not doing my, anything. Over oh, the yeah. band's hand jobs. We were, we were at the point that my balls were turning blue to black. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now. Honestly, man, I was like, he's leaving. Just yeah. Can we just, let's go. Can you get All some right. hand stuff? Yeah. No, you go back. You go back in time, though. Like that. That long. The the idea of a long distance relationship does seem obtainable when you are that age. It does seem. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like oh okay yeah we can do this and and then being an adult and looking back you're like no no like the minute I set foot into college I was in I was in college for like a week I was like oh my god no no the long distance relationship does not work for anyone yeah you know because there were How buddies of mine it? that were that were doing <laughs> that I'm like yeah this doesn't work. How, like, and she figured that out right away. Yeah. Clearly he did too, I guess, right? Like, was he being a piece of shit before this or after she left? Okay. I have to imagine it's before. Do we think so, though? Then why does he care? Does he care? Like, are we assuming that this this family is like super, super rich farming family? Which is juxtaposition in itself, because I don't think there's many of those out there. Yeah. But like, why does he care so much about uh, Becca when he's got... He's got Tracy and any woman he wants. He's the, he's the catch of the town. Yeah. I don't um, know. It, it seems maybe it's kind of like a uh, St. Elmo's thing where it's like he's indoctrinated into uh, this like uh, farm life and he's got to be married to the other farm family or some gotcha. shit. You know, he like he likes to fuck Tracy. Oh, yeah. But he can't necessarily be with Tracy because they're not farm or something. Something like that kind of bullshit. Is where Which I, they just say like, hey, whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, we're, we're not they don't bring it up it. at all. <laughs> well, my, I think my biggest question is how long after high school can you continue to wear your Letterman jacket? I think it's oh, the first year. Yeah. I think that's you it. Still get, you still it get It might even year. be Christmas, like n- turn of the calendar the following year. Yep. Okay. So like New Year's Eve, you can probably wear it, yeah. and then that's maybe Well, it. because it's warm. Like, it is a comfy jacket. It's a warm jacket. You know, but it, uh, you know, I think what like what you're saying, it's douchey. Uh, well, think of think if he did go to, if he also went to a college somewhere. He did. And then he's just like wearing that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, guys. <laughs> it, no, no. Everyone knows that you only wear your Letterman jacket if you don't go to college. If you, yeah, <laughs> and you stay in the town that you are from. Hey, I'm staying in this town, and this is my Letterman jacket <laughs> from when I was captain of the team. I feel like if you wear your Letterman jacket and you get into a college and you're still wearing your Letterman jacket, the thing that you say is, "It was the best of times." Yes. <laughs> but was, then you stop there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that is the problem for many many people. Like high school is the best of times. Yeah. Unless you go to college, and then college is the best of times. Yeah, you know. And so, like, yeah. so if you don't go, then yeah, high school was the best of times. It's it, it, it's true. Like, move them moving through this whole. It's very fast. Like, it's it's very much like. Was it? I mean, was it that fast for you guys? <laughs> well, it's at enough, this point, like, enough. oh, I graduated. And now I'm leaving the next day. Summer's over. No. <laughs> like, what's happening here? Well, it's another situation of, like, he's like, you sure you want to go? It's it's like, it's yeah, okay. we, we, we put our deposit down. <laughs> like, I'm accepted to the school. They are expecting me next week. I can't just not go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, I can't just not go to college. They are expecting me to be there because I said I was going to sleep in a dorm room. Dad, you're going to lose $5,000 yeah. if I stay home. More are than you, that. Are you <laughs> sure about that five thousand just for the tuition and the board yeah like yeah. not all the money you're gonna send to me for stuff that i need to buy and books yeah everything yeah like <laughs> good you, god you're gonna be losing more if i don't go than me like you don't hey you don't have to do this it's like i think i do i do I also, think- also becca baby like i would love to know what you're majoring in because yeah <laughs> all this money <laughs> can we just are you just gonna get a, get a degree in college Yes, and that's it, and and ah. it's and it's just University of Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, is that a thing? I don't think like, it is. And why is why is University of Los Angeles so coveted to somebody in South Dakota? <laughs> Like, UCLA, maybe? Yeah, yeah. UC- University of California, Los yeah. Angeles. I don't think there's just a University of Los Angeles. <laughs> okay. How about uh, Patrick Renna in this, though? Like, Amazing. Is oh, he... Prop- oh, you would just Ooh, want Patrick Renna? Here's a prop. <laughs> Seduce me, please, T-shirt. <laughs> I don't know Dang why you it. don't already have Give that. me that right now. That is a great one. That's the best thing I've ever seen. <sighs> then, you know, I'm sticking on Patrick Renna, then. I, I miss my Game Boy. I saw that Game Boy in his hand. Oh. And I was like, I don't care how dim the screen is. I don't care how shitty the graphics are. I want that in my hand, all 17 pounds of that thing, and I want to hear those noises. 
I want to play Game I want to hear. I just want to. I just need the the noises. That's what I want in my life. Um, I want. Um, mm, I want. I want Polly Shore's uh, uh, camcorder. Yeah. Okay. I want the camcorder. Nice. Yeah. An acceptable answer also would have been hit the the young photo, the young nerdy the photo of Polly Shore <laughs> for our put, wall. Put, put that right, right next, next to, to Tommy. That, that would have been to Tommy awesome. <laughs> He's yeah. he's he's like so great, and this was released the same year same as year. Sandlot. Yeah, and actually, I don't know what the order was there, but but he's like he perfectly plays the shitty, creepy, gross younger brother of the '90s. Yeah. This is a cliche role. Like, is exactly what this is. Dude, yeah. so he could be like in our last week's movie, role models. He could be like one of those kids or something. Like, yeah. I could see a different universe Ooh. of like, uh, uh, what's his name from it. Um, uh, Bill, Bill Hader, Bill Hader, like in that in one of those roles, yeah, taking care of Patrick Renner or some shit. Like I would love to see that, you know. Yeah. he's that good. Like we we said it in Sandlot. Go back and listen to Sandlot. But he is amazing. He's yeah. like an incredible actor. Patrick Renner is definitely a saving grace for me for this movie. Or like when I fr- like uh, let me, let me rephrase that. When I turn this back on. And realized that he was in this movie. Yes. I, it like got me a little bit more into the movie. Yes, that's what I mean by that. Yeah, he is like, oh, cool, he is in this movie. I forgot about that. Nice. Okay, cool. And I was all, I was a little bit more in. And he's just so gross. Like he's like, gra- they're they're not disciplining him at all. No. Like he's grabbing the bra <laughs> out of the lady's thing, and they're not even yelling at him. He's yeah. grabbing a camcorder to film a lesbian makeout scene. Oh, like dad, he does the camera. Dad, dad, give me the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he he does not care at all. But I'll tell you what, I immediately again, like last week, role models. I was laughing out loud the minute Pauly Shore came into this movie. Yeah, I uh, from Biodome being on trial, which is out now. It is. Um, it's it's up for review at this it point. Is. What we do love about Encino Man, even though we do not love Dave Morgan at all, we love Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser. We do. Um, He's he it's the, it's his vehicle. Like this yep. is all Polly Shore. And I think this I think there was a reviewer that said so too. It was like, I think this, this is his best thing that he's yeah. ever done. Okay. I really love I really love him in this movie. Like he's even like he is being swirly, you know? He's being He's the same he's he's, he's the being role. Polly Shore, yeah. you know, but he's like even kind of in last week's episode too, like role models, there's, there's a little bit of heart to him in yes. this. And I love it. I think he's really great in this. And just the lines, man, like the uh, he, the dad goes over to, oh, thank God, it's the resident advisor. Oh, God, you're living across all from authority. I remember the resident advisors in my dorms were not authority. <laughs> and, they were, <laughs> and they were not. But but anyway, he fall, he comes down and he's like, I need a screwdriver. He's like, sorry, all out of vodka. All out of vodka. <laughs> it, like, that's a funny joke. Yeah. That is a Funny joke, and yeah. I laughed so hard at that. Because at that point, Lane Smith, the, the dad, is a fish <laughs> out of water. You know, like yes. the, the whole family is at this point. Um, yeah, it's great. I I love him. Uh, I I love uh, the Butthole Surfer song playing in the background. <laughs> that riff is dope, yeah. dude. Like, oh, I like that was on Guitar Hero. I think I love that song. And did she move in like two weeks late? Because everyone was there already in this dorm room, just. Run that guys. I, I lived in a one of the biggest dorms in Iowa City at the University of Iowa. Never move out or move in was there that many people just never that running people. around <laughs> ever. Like they, they really just add into the chaos of this. Like, oh wow, it's so crazy. It's the big city. It's like uh, the guy's nah. the guy's towel gets ripped off, and Lane Smith is like, God damn. It's like, was it in the shape of a question mark? Like, what did you see, man? I know. That's a dick. Nom flash. Tell you what, everybody was pretty stoked to see that though. <laughs> From mom to yeah. Patrick Renna. Patrick Renna was way into it. He was it. like, you know what? This is dope. All I right. never saw my dad's dick, but I at least saw one now. Yeah, yeah. Look, guys. look at that. I love free living, you know? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Commun- free living. Communal living. Communal huh? living. Uh, I do think it's very true about uh, when I was reading through some of those, a lot of people made reference of this is like, there's a lot of plot devices that don't really add or they don't really have any follow through on them, like uh, her roommate. And it's just like, it's, it is just a thing that they gloss over. Yeah. It's, it's the nineties. It's trying to like, is it show you how uncomfortable it's the culture shock? It's the culture shock oh. of wow. The LA yeah. things are so different out here. Yeah. So okay, so okay. There's so. no lesbians in South Dakota. No, I gotcha. they don't exist. They there. do not exist. At least not ones that look like that. <laughs> so uh. you can't say that. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
<laughs> well, but love our lesbians, li- listeners. Yeah, the guys, uh, we're talking. Guys. We're making fun of the nineties. Obviously, here. we're three guys. We love lesbians. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there, there's that culture shock both ways. Like they're they're shocked at a, at two women making out. Okay, yeah. that's but what they're getting at. Yeah. Oh I yeah. So. It's yeah. just shocking. Oh my god. Because that was the, the like maybe that just shows like how how like out of touch I am remembering that. I'm like, why is this so shocking? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, which like, is great that you think that. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. I don't even this. even going back and watching Friends. Like, oh, he's gay. <laughs> What? Oh my god! Oh, I would never kiss a guy. You know, it's it's still like on the cusp of yeah being like not a joke. Yes, like not a punchline. It's I guess right there. Yeah, but even then, he's got the culture shock of like meeting small town America. What he says? Ah, oh, yeah, like your mom's your dad and your dad's your brother. Oh, that I had statement. to stop it. I hit pause and I was like, wait. Yeah, no, I your can't. mom's your dad. So wait, your mom is your dad. That's actually very progressive. And then, but your dad's your brother. What is he talking no, about? No, I can't. Like it it out. Family math is the worst math. I can't do it. <laughs> he just, dude, he he comes right out with the inbred jokes. It's awesome. And just has no remorse about it. And you're just like, dang, like that's you can't say that either. Like, that's messed up, dude. Hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna go one way, you gotta be able to go the other, you know? Uh, <laughs> True. Right? I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Equal opportunity people. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Um the Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser. We haven't got there yet. Okay. Wow. Would you like to get there? I would like to get there. Well, then let's move on to scene two. So Becca doesn't adapt well to her new life and attempts to call home, but Crawl stops her and convinces her to give it another try. She soon begins to acclimate and makes changes to her appearance and personality. Her and Crawl become good friends, and she invites him to spend Thanksgiving break with her family. Um, I guess I watched Encino Man after I watched this movie because I never got the reference. You would have never understood why that was happening. No, yeah, I, not at all. I mean, like this came out maybe two years. It's only after. one. It's only like one year. One later. year. Okay. I think it was ninety two and ninety three. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. It's so cool to see this. I like some of the reviewers like, yeah, you add in a little stupid Dude. little cameo in there. I think it's great. Why the fuck not? If what? he's available, let's let's do it. Why why isn't that funny to like make a reference to? And now everyone loves it with the fucking Marvel universe, you know? Yeah. Like they would love to see this kind of we shit. We said now. we said our, our video is gone. We have this this TikTok and this reel that talks about this fake yeah. idea of a Pauly Shore multiverse where it's like he sort of recognizes him, but he doesn't. You yeah. know, like, oh, it was just an alternate universe that because this they very well could have made this in Cino Man 2. This could have been Pauly Shore's character in Encino Man and Link go Stony and Link go to college. Totally. Yeah. And it and it, there would have been nothing wrong with this. It would have been the exact same guy beat just in college. Yep. Yep. And I almost halfway wish they would have. Honestly, Kinda do too. honestly, that would have been great because you don't have Dave Morgan. Yeah, Dave's love, gone. Sh- love Sean S. And obviously, we love him, but that character is horrible. You and, know, yeah. and Link could have just played a small role here, other than just a cameo. It would have been fucking yeah. awesome. Would have been really great. Steve Couser could have been there. Steve Couser could have come back. He, gra- he graduated <laughs> along with them oh, and went to college. Nice. <laughs> janitor at the college. <laughs> yeah. No, he, Steve Couser's older, so he would have just taken a job as a janitor at college. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. That would have been uh, fucking awesome, man. The uh, the conversation, the reason I really like some of these moments with Pauly Shore is he be, he when he drops his uh, stony voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. He drops the crawl voice, and he ha- he's like, "Just give me five minutes, and like, if you don't like what I have to say, then you can like go right back to doing." It. But he has these like moments, these glimpses of him being very serious with yeah. her. And like being very like forthright and like honest yeah. and just be like, look, hey, you know, this is what you're about to do to yourself. And she's not like, oh, man, listen, Becca, I, I love you and all. And I'm proud of you for going to L.A. and trying something new. But you are not trying something new. No. Yeah. It's Halloween night in college and you're doing laundry. <laughs> yeah. You deserve to have this party happening in your room and this fat guy in a dress breaking your little horse, <laughs> yeah. which, by the way. Like she's so sad about this horse, but clearly we're gonna meet Grand- Grandpa Whittleswood every night. Yeah, he's, he's he can made make you another seven. Of he's these good you know? <laughs> since you've been gone. He's got a pile of of bad ones like behind him off the off the deck <laughs> that he's been throwing that are just as good probably. If yes. they cut to a pile of them just behind him, that would he'll love never that. make one again. It just goes to pile. Yeah, <laughs> tosses another yeah. right back. <laughs> but hey, actually, I want to hit this while we're in the Halloween party. Uh-oh. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. 
That's what I'm talking about. So our boy uh, Adam Goldberg makes a quick move in this. As the Native guys. American. As, as the very <laughs> not liberal Native American guy who says hick washerwoman. These are supposed to be just California people that are very liberal, liberal, and he's dressed up like a Native American saying hick washer woman. Yeah. I'm going to punch him. Okay. He's out of place. I'm punching him. No, it sucks. It sucks having to punch him. But I uh, mean, he's already he got punched in Days Confused. I feel like every movie he's in, he's just got to get jacked. Okay. Yeah. Because of that, I'm in. You know, uh, what? Travis gets his later, so I'm, Ooh, I'm Travis, okay with Travis that. already got his, but yeah. yeah. You got anybody else, you know? I'm Not punching really. Theo. Oh, Duh. see, that's a good one. See, I mean, Theo like, deserves it. Theo never makes any sort of redemption in this movie. No. And, like, at, at any point, and he never really gets his either. Oh. He needs to be punched. And there's yeah, actually okay. not a reason for how he is who he is. Yeah, exactly. There's just zero uh, reason why he does what he does. Correct. That's Other than why just being a piece of shit. That's why he just needs to be punched because like somebody needs to lay him out. I wish it would have been like grandpa or something, right? Or like he grandpa ends up slapping him and oh, like causes and a then tear. He goes, Buddy. Yeah, exactly. And, but it never happens. I totally agree about about the Indian. <laughs> it's just weird in the me. in the dorm thing. But it's like it's like, dude. Yeah, not cool, but Theo deserves he it. He was too. brown facing in this movie. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of messed up, bro. But but the best part for me about Crawl is that he seriously is a good person. He understands fully that if Becca makes this phone call and goes home, her life is fucked. Yeah. Like, and I don't mean fucked in a way of like she goes home, she marries Travis. She pops out a couple kids, gets divorced, and whatever. She just lives her life. It is what it is. But she needs to see this through. She made the choice to be here. She needs to keep going and fully immerse herself in this culture. And he did not have to do that. No. He did not have to make that conversation, but he did. And I'm I'm very happy that he did because it was the right call. When he first comes off as like the, you know kind of guy who's like oh new yeah, new blood fresh meat, fresh yeah. meat on yeah very on very very weird <laughs> very very gross you know but yeah. like i think he's he's just like a a character that he feels like he needs to play yeah like as this character you know what i mean um but then like he realizes this is just like a person yes and he loves people so he wants to help people i don't know it's like he's got maybe a little bit of a romantic interest there too like, for sure like maybe if i help yeah. maybe we can Definitely, you know. I mean, he certainly he he basically. I mean, he 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 sees himself in her. Yeah, not in a bad way, but well. <laughs> oh my! But he God. sees this <laughs> self in her in the best way, and says I like. What you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know any other way to say it. I couldn't get there. But he that's when he shows like the picture, like hey, this is who I was, and like, and the the line that he says, I think you kind of said it, Mike. The line that he says. Is like I don't fit in here. It's like how do you know you don't fit in here? You're not even actually here. You're not. Doing you're still yeah. back there. You're not partaking in anything. You're not doing anything. No wonder different. your roommate didn't invite you to the Halloween. Party. You're trying to live your life. You're trying to live in this completely new world. You might as well have moved to a different country, and you haven't given yourself a chance to experience any of it. Yeah. You know. And I think that's a really. I think that's actually a really powerful statement for anybody going through that time. Yeah. In their life, well, it's relatable to everything. It's like if you go, if you t- if you want to travel the world, yeah, but you go to an all inclusive in Mexico, right? Yeah, you're not exactly. getting outside. You're, you're of that. literally there's no point to your trip there, right? To say, oh, I've been I've to Mexico. Traveled no, the you world haven't. And You've been not Mexico. been to Mexico. Yeah, and you are You've literally been, talking yeah. about my potential uh, honeymoon, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. No, and, that's the thing. It has its, its place. It's, <laughs> it's one of the best trips you will ever make in your life to just relax and party, but you're not. Seeing Mexico, yeah, correct. You you will be in <laughs> Mexico for for if you're in Mexico for ten days, you will actually be in Mexico for a total of like an hour and a half. Yes, <laughs> the drive to the resort and the drive back. Yeah, yeah. Well, and another thing he says too, which is uh, kind of poignant to your point that you're making, is like I I grew the dew, and drank, drank some, some brew, brew. <laughs> guzzled some brew. <laughs> I mean, like honestly, like this place is amen to that. Honestly, it. let's no. go, yeah, bro. Let's go. Uh, we're well, son-in-law boys, let's, huh? Let us touch our tips okay. gingerly. Yes. Gingerly. Uh, yes. Um, this like college is kind of like any any major change in your life is not even like a change in location. It's a change of state of mind too. Like you yeah. gotta you gotta kind of acclimate and buy in and buy into company culture as as you will. You know, it's a bit of a surrender. Yeah, you have to surrender to it. The, you know, the best part is she's been in she's been in college for let's call it two months now. 
And she's not made a single attempt to do anything. And then she spends like a week with (laughs) with crawl. (laughs) And within a matter of she's now home about two weeks later. Yeah. So she's made this just massive change in life over the course of about two weeks, which is actually kind of a cool statement on college life because there were when you're that young, you're very quick to like find a new identity in something. But yeah. like, my God, she makes a complete change of her life in a short time. Truthfully, yeah. it is. It's about two and a half weeks because Halloween, it was Halloween party night to Thanksgiving. To right. Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving is the last day. Or, the, or is the day that where they finish this movie up on. Correct. So she went home the week before Thanksgiving. Right. Leading up to it. So, man, that's crazy. Uh, it, like, you think about that, and I, I also really like their uh, their little... Um, yeah. <laughs> I also just really like yep. their, their uh, dynamic of... Like, she does go all in eventually. Yeah. But their dynamic is they are... They are friends. They're really fun. Together. They are they are just friends. Yeah. Like they don't mind. Like this is platonic. Yeah. Like, like look at look at that guy. Like, He's cute oh, as hell, you know. Oh, look at her. I'm gonna marry that girl. And yeah. like they're they're checking out chicks and guys together. That's hilarious. That's, That's cool. fucking awesome. Do you find it weird on that point? Do you find it weird that they make it into a romantic interest by the end of the movie? It's you know, I don't know. It I think it's there's one way that I think about it that it is like this character of Polly Shore, which is like the squirrely, stony character, crawl character that he, that, you know, that it is Polly Shore yeah. in this era. Um, where it doesn't quite make sense because of that. But also, I want to see that. I kind of like, did. At this point, yeah, you're right. I, I like, I'm, I'm into that kind of change where he's not just uh, Dave, Dave Morgan's friend. Yeah. You yeah. know, he is, he is the main character of this movie. Okay. And, and maybe he could be a, a love interest. Who knows? And like, I do like that, you know, this is like a, almost a Hallmark plot where he brings the, true. the, the guy who has nothing to do with back home, back home. <laughs> You know, like this is a Christmas. This is it really if is. This isn't Thanksgiving. This is a Hallmark Christmas. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, it's the original Hallmark Christmas movie. But there's Basically that is. formula works, man. They they it keep does. pumping those things out year after year. There's something about it that works, you know. And it kind of works for me, where it's just like <laughs> that. That kind of uh, oh, we spent so much time together. We were friends. There might be something else here. Yeah. I, I kind of like that about it. But yeah, kinda, what do you guys think? Well, I think I think it is. It's a it's a blinded by friendship. Um, you know how our relationship really started was him helping her kind of get out of her shell, and she does go through a big transitional time, and it just becomes like this new thing. And Stony is just my friend. I keep calling him Stony. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Like, but Crawl is just my friend. But he also doesn't make any major hard advances on her at this no. time either. Yeah, because. Like when he drops the beer on her lap, you know, it's like <laughs> super funny. Uh, but I, I actually really like that. He's he's just like encouraging her to get out of her shell. Yeah. That's all he's genuinely doing. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's move on to scene three. So when Becca and Crawl arrive in South Dakota, her family barely recognizes her. At dinner, Becca and Crawl uh, intervene on Travis's proposal by pretending that he had already proposed. This upsets Becca's family and Travis punches Crawl in the face. Now acting as a future son-in-law, Crawl expresses an interest in farming, but bumbles his way through daily chores to the amusement of Walter and his farmhand, Theo. Uh, what would you say your name was? Crotch? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I love it. Hey, uh, 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 crotch? Uh, crawl. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dude, you even have a good Lane Smith impression. Jesus how the, what is the matter with you? No one has a Lane Smith impression except for you guys, AJ. You guys want to hear my Lane Smith impression? Who, Who the, the fuck, fuck is, is Lane Smith? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I love me some Lane Smith. Same, I do too. I can't wait to cover my cousin Vinny, dude. Fucking amazing in that movie. I love that movie so much. When was my cousin Vinny? 91. Ooh, okay. Okay, so he did my cousin Vinny, Mighty Ducks, son in law, then probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I forgot he was in Mighty Ducks. Dude, he was fucking Coach Riley. Coach Riley. And and that's how I, I mean, that's my Lane Smith, right? Is Coach (laughs) Riley. Yeah, yeah. But, But I'll tell you what, man, he's like. He's. I like him as a dad. I, mm-hmm. I. I don't. I don't have any. I don't know if they were trying to make him like an unlikable needs a character arc, but like I really, 
I think he's fine in this movie. He's like, solid, man. He's just trying to be the best dad that he can and, yeah. and, and build his business up and make sure his daughter's okay in the world. Like yeah. there's no there's nothing negative about him. No. He, he did uh he did My Cousin Vinny and uh Mighty Ducks in the same year, nineteen ninety two. Wow. Oh, right on. Wow. Okay. And then son in law after this. Like he's he's having a banger career time Fuck right yeah. now. <laughs> and you're right though. I love him in this because he is not necessarily like an over the top like Get away from my daughter, yeah. kind of guy. You know, he's kind of accepting in he, general. Like, overall, okay, well, oh, shit. Yeah, he this really guy's is. weird. Yeah, he's whatever. weird, but shit, he's here. He what popped my daughter's trunk. Yeah, like, he's uh, like, you'll be glad to know. <laughs> 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 right after you left, I popped your daughter's trunk, and you're just like, God dang it! Like delivery and perception is everything here. Um, but I do actually really love his character. I think I think he does a really good job playing this dad. Yeah, but I would be. I'm putting myself into the shoes of of the dad, right? So Willa, Willa gets older. Yeah. Willa's 19 years old. <laughs> she goes away to college. She's my little girl. We you, live in small you've town built Iowa. Built this empire. <laughs> I built this empire, <laughs> and she goes. She leaves a a curly redhead girl, and she comes back uh, less than three months later. Like in goth or something, Having or whatever. Been tattooed by Flea. And, and talking different, and I'm like. Ah, what the fuck? You can't. You're just make, You're just doing this. You're, you're doing. You're him. just doing this. <laughs> you're just doing. You're not this. really this person. This is bullshit. I like, can tell. I like, get it. I can smell a facade a mile away. This is okay? fake. <laughs> you don't talk like this. And like, <laughs> and that's my little girl. <laughs> that's the problem. I'll tell you what though. She steps off that plane. You're like, oh, damn. Oh wow. <laughs> Carla. <It's> like, <laughs> like, what's that? Carla. Carla. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it's just like, and then, he, then he steps Ooh. up. Travis is thinking that. Travis is like, oh, he's uh, like, shouldn't yeah. wear my good shirt. I sh- <laughs> shouldn't have worn this Letterman jacket I sh- <laughs> <laughs> ever. Oh. <laughs> I love the the small town juxtaposition though. They go, you you notice that they're like going around to the shops downtown, yeah, and that like a lady drives by and like flicks them off. Uh, the lady like pulls her kid away from them. The oh, fucking inbreeders yeah. sitting on the bench, like they were <laughs> inbreeders. Like that's not a joke. Those are guys were probably like they they picked some good people for that one. Yeah, they you know, look they, like they it. They look about spot on. Uh, that, did you recognize one of them? No, guy from uh, Ernest Scared Stupid. No, runs no, the store. no, 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 no. Oh, really? Dude? No, no, no. Let look me look up. that up. You you talk. I look it up. I thought it, and then I go. There's no. Well, there's your inbreeder before this, right? Uh, Travis. Proposes to oh, her. Oh yes, we have he to does. get th- we have to get that in here because that Travis does that's propose. That's just like ew. I know. What the like right off the plane? In the, By the like way, in the barn. In the barn. Right? Like, give me a break, dude. Now I understand. I understand like where he's coming from on this. It's like you bring a dude home from college. Who, by the way, Stony, <laughs> which crawl, you didn't tell me about, <laughs> crawl has been in college for six years. Yeah. is what they say. <laughs> so that would make him twenty four. That that means. Uh, give or take, right? Sure. And that means Travis is he? They he just graduated with her, yeah. And that means they're eighteen, nineteen. True, right? True. Older guy, older guy, bringing home from, Got some experience. from college, yeah. Like, how is he not like? What the hell's going on here? <laughs> I would, yeah, I everybody mean, would be this way. Put yourself in his shoes. If he's not a piece of shit, I'd be pissed the fuck off. I'm gonna say humanize the goons just for now. Um. That you're like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. This is kind of bullshit for Travis at this point. Because, and FYI, she does not handle this, like, well at all. Yeah. She is kind of a shitty person, too. Honestly, (laughs) I I hate to say it with Carla because I love her so much, but I'm like, throughout this movie, I'm just like, you're kind of doing this all to yourself. All to yourself. And you're lying yourself into the grave, and it's, uh, you're not, I mean, you're in college. You didn't learn not to do that. You're, Come on, you're you're li- like you're handling all this entire scenario the worst way possible, yeah. and then literally make creating this like this love triangle by doing what you're doing and hoping that you've got two people fighting over you now. Like, dude, that's fucked up. Well, and she says <laughs> she's like, I don't want to hurt him. So just well, in- literally instead of just turning him down and hurting him, that's the thing. You turn him down by saying, "I'm already engaged." Yeah. Already engaged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, huh? you, you know what? You know what? Pr- that that must you must assume at that point that's probably already happened. You know, it's like 
Well, Travis is sitting here like, oh, I lost, I lost my girlfriend who who promised that she wasn't going to go off to college and do this. Well, and do you find it interesting that that if this is your first watch of Son in Law, you re- you really don't know that Travis is a bad guy yet? No, and that's what I mean. There's there's that one subtle on the phone when she calls yeah. home. He's like, shut up, Tracy. In yeah, the Tracy, oh, Tracy, I told you not to call me to again tonight or whatever. Yeah, he like subtly says that aloud, but you're not going to catch that. Right. right. And so, so like, you don't know he's a bad guy. So at this point, you're definitely humanizing him and being yeah. like, correct. sucks. That's, but also you're charmed, yeah. charmed to all hell of, of crawl. Yes. And so you just want to see him do what he does, you yeah, know, down home cooking people. <laughs> you're supposed to, at this point, as the viewer, you're, you're bought in and supposed to believe that crawl is just the, he, I mean, he's not doing anything wrong here. But if you have it from the perception of like all the people that they're coming home to, you're like, this is <laughs> fucked up. I love when he gets out of the changing room and Tracy's there. Yeah. The way he's like, <laughs> what's her name? Like, introduce me or not? Like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> come on. It's very cheek chillers. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't care. I love it. I want to dress that way. You think I could pull out like not a assless chaps outfit, but you think I could wear like a scarf around my head and like maybe uh, some bell bottoms and yeah, stuff like that? Sure, you think man. I could? You yeah. might be able to do the long scarf. Yeah. No, I think you could do whatever you want. No, do it. So maybe on the next episode, <laughs> I should just show up in the outfit. Yeah, I think you should. I think it'd be really good. I think it, you yeah. know, be especially for the video. People would love to see that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cut off overalls with oh. like your, your your underwear hanging out the bottom of it, and like um, yeah. boots. Cool. Yeah. And like a, a lot of purple and a really small cowboy crop hat. top. For yeah. Sure. yeah. For yes. Sure. All right, let's try it. Yeah. Fishnet crop top. Cool yes. guys. Yes. We'll try it next time. You would look. Great. Well, based on my Craig? time out, based on my experience, uh, you know, had I seen this at a young age, like I saw in Encino Man, you remember I told you I had an outfit to look exactly like Brendan Fraser in Encino Man. Okay. Yeah. Love that. I, I bought like a cardigan vest and a white shirt and had like thick socks that came up over my Converse. So I probably would have tried to look like this. Hell yeah. Impressionable. I can't Impressionable. tell you how many times I rewound the part where uh, Travis punches him because he. Uh, says, well, we're engaged, obviously, and uh, in the hotel lot, wherever they're fucked. They're, they're, at, yeah. the, they're at the restaurant. Country club. Right? Yeah, the country, country club. club. Yeah, yeah. The way he punches him, and he falls down. He's like, why did you <laughs> do that? <laughs> my, me and my dad and my brother rewound that so many times. I fucking love it. <laughs> do that for? <laughs> like he's never been punched because he's never been. He's like... never been in this scenario. <laughs> yeah. And again, I'm, a, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to say it. This is her fault. It's completely her fault. Yeah. It's her fault. What the fuck? You made me wait all this long uh, to do anything. Like, yeah. Which he didn't wait, but you well, know, yeah, she I thinks didn't. he waited. Exactly. Yeah. And so, like, this guy comes along, this 24-year-old guy yeah. comes along and fruity. Y- yeah. Old, old guy that older <laughs> guy. Oh, uh, you corrupted my girl. She's my property, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> So what about all like the farming stuff? Like, are we are we happy about like? Do we like these montages and these just like, ah, fish out of water on a farm? He's never gonna get it. These are like, them. are these funny? These, I mean, they're like, huh. yeah, it's it's they're that funny. It's chuckle. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like because it can, uh, crap. Uh, <laughs> uh, crap. Uh, it's good. It's crawl. Oh yeah, yeah. Crawl. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> God damn it, AJ. <laughs> How do you do that? I don't know. Will you teach me? I will. I want to do love to. We just we'll do it. Some we'll do it. All right. Um maybe we'll hang out outside of this. Yeah. If yeah. you if whenever you whatever you would like to, you know. I'm in my balls are in your court. Um Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. And well, I will just say this. <laughs> that please say something. I, I'm trying at this point. <laughs> he keeps derailing going. me. <laughs> <laughs> is it really a fish out of water thing? It's like, oh, I'm just going to be a farmer like you. And instead, we don't get, honestly, we don't get like the hardship montage. It's not like that big You're of a right. hardship it's montage. Really, he's it's just really fucking just, around. it's just him dicking around and kind of making the best out of it. Yeah. And you're you're kind of it's kind of endearing, but at the same time, it's it's not really a moment of like, oh, I don't know if he's gonna get it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's he got just, it. <laughs> he's just doing whatever he wants. He doesn't actually care. Yeah. So I don't know. It it doesn't it doesn't pin it as like a uh, yeah we're gonna scare him off of here. He's gonna go back to L.A. crying. It's not that kind of mentality out of this montage. But it seems like that's what Theo wants to do. Yeah, but he never gets there. And and there's no 
like uh, dad doesn't actually be like Theo. You need to make this guy. You need to make him hate right. his life. Yeah, it's just such a Theo's just a the worst. He's just like I'm just a piece of shit redneck. Yeah, you know, like that's just gonna make this guy suffer because I don't like him. Yeah, but he likes Travis. He, who likes Travis? I don't get it. Maybe mm. he's in love with Travis. Oh. I do get it. You think? I do get, I get that. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, Theo this guy, sucks. This guy who plays Travis could have easily played like Superman. In Honestly, some sort of TV he's a show. handsome dude. He's, he's, a, he's handsome actually man. really good in this. I like him. A I lot. think he's actually very good in this too. You know, because uh, again, let's take this back. He's doing it. He does a wonderful job at at playing the guy who's playing the subtle bad guy. Yeah. Unlike Skeet Ulrich, <laughs> he knows what he's doing to be kind of like he can play this part very well. And it's great. I like that there, there isn't a big reveal of him actually being a piece of shit. Because I th- like until later on, because I think it's I think that's important for for the actually propelling the story along. Mm-hmm. I think that's honestly as much of the drama about this like storyline as much as anything uh, is the fact that you should feel conflicted for Travis. Probably, yes. mm-hmm. you know what I mean. He's definitely a wish dot com James Marsden. Yeah, you got oh, it. 100%. Oh, hundred percent. And yep. actually, his name is Dan Gothier. And if you if you're of my age out there and you were a big Say by the Bell fan and you know all the the not like the TV movies they made, he was the romantic attorney interest in Saved by the Bell Hawaiian style who who was in love with Kelly Kapowski, yes. Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Wow. <laughs> so I'm just saying they, they already had that chemistry. They already oh, yeah, had they that did. chemistry. Uh-huh. They already had that chemistry. Yeah. That's not what I meant. Oh, yeah. sorry. Chem- That's not... I didn't mean any of that. Are but you yeah, sure? I remember, but he was a very hated guy in that because he's like... He's the weasel attorney in that, and then yeah. he's like, okay. the next year he's the same hated guy <laughs> in this in this movie. It's like, come on, man, that sucks for you. He plays it well, typecast, yeah. typecast, bro. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's move on to scene number four. So, Crawl begins to prove himself as an avid farmer. He impresses Becca's little brother, Zach, with his computer skills. He also helps bring Becca's mother out of her shell for Walter, culminating at the town dance. When Walter's father has a heart attack, Crawl performs CPR and earns Walter's trust for aiding his father. Travis apologizes to Crawl for hitting him and invites him to a bachelor party where Crawl and Tracy are drugged. Man. Can you guys believe it? I just... Would have never imagined a day when there were multiple, multiple dressing slash uh, makeup montages in a movie from the 90s and no right said Fred. Wow. It honestly You're right. didn't feel right at all. D- are, are you are you kidding me? I like, can't watch anybody dress up. It didn't feel right because Fred didn't say it. Exactly. They had so yeah. many opportunities. They had in like getting uh um Becca, you know, getting her yep. and her new get getting the mom ready for like her dance. Yep. Yeah. She could have kept coming out in outfits and she'd be like, I don't like this. And he'd be like, I don't he'd like, like it. <laughs> no, no. He's like eating something funny. <laughs> yes. Like some, some weird popcorn. Some, or some, some shit. weird beginning to some mother in law like porn yeah. weird thing that's happening here. Just, oh, yeah, Crawl dude. and I will be coming soon. <laughs> I'm changing. Well, well, yeah. Crawl will bam, probably be coming bam, before bam, I do. Bam, bam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the greatest comedy of the 90s, Dumb and Dumber, had right said Fred. Yeah. So uh, like yeah. what are what are, how are we how are we not having it in You this got movie? the rights to spin doctors but not right said Fred. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it I feel like you know that's the, I feel like right said Fred is like public domain by now. It, it might as well be. be. Yeah. It's intellectual property just yeah. for everyone yeah, to I think use. So. Um there's a there's a lot of like almost little callbacks and I don't know if you can call them that. One of them in particular is the just give me 5 minutes and if you don't like what I have to say then we can just do mm-hmm. it the way you were going to do it. Uh, Crawl does that a couple different times. Um, there's another one I can't remember it one, uh, exactly, but um, but it happens a few different times. It's it's like these common themes of just give me five minutes and let's try something new. Yeah, you know, here's a new perspective. Right, just listen to it. If you don't like it, then fuck. I'll fuck off. Yeah, exactly. I uh, I uh, yeah. I don't know. I I the the bachelor party. I know. Well, we're not quite there yet. Not quite I don't know. there yet. Let's I'll go let, to the I'll dance. Let else do that. Yeah. Dance. Let's go to the dance again. This is what we do here at Confused Breakfast. Being musicians, we point out the fact that never, ever in the history of movies does a band perform somewhere with a PA system to amplify the music and the vocals. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. just doesn't happen. 
<laughs> and this barn dance is one of them. And that bass player isn't playing shit. No. So, yeah. Uh, there A lot of them just aren't. Um, boot scooting. Come on, let's go boot scooting. I love that song. I, I like that song, but I also can't, I can't <laughs> move past it ever without doing that. Boot scoot. <laughs> Boogie. Oh, boot scoot. Boot scoot. Oh, that's got boot scoot. Oh, boot scoot. Because it's boot scooting, not boot scoot. Yeah. And boot scooting. Boot scoot. Boot scoot. That's how he does it. Yeah. Boot scooting. I don't know. I hate that so much, guys. <laughs> okay. I need. To, I needed that to be known. No. I'm let's gl- let's I'm focus that on that and Patreon. Do we like the mate? Do we like the makeover here? Do we like the idea of her getting out of her shell and wearing makeup for the first time, like in who knows how long? And and that sad line of like. Well, why, well, what does it matter? Like, like, why would I wear makeup? You know, like very that. sad. Yeah. Like it make it makes their relationship like really sad. Like, what is the last time they fucking had sex? Fuck. <laughs> I mean, you know, they you, don't. They have two single beds. You get caught up and uh, run on the farm, and she gets caught up and just making lunch, I guess. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> never any time. <laughs> yeah, never any time to do anything. I guess making but, lunch and. I don't know, uh, man. Like how? Let, look, let's be realistic here. How old are these two supposed to be? Like they have an eighteen-year-old daughter. This is the time frame when they would have probably gotten married at like twenty. Let's go call it twenty twenty twenty-two. Yeah, means that that they're like forty. Yeah, yeah. And and they just there's just the <laughs> yeah. weird old mentality of like, well, we're old and we're, we sleep in separate beds. We're it's good like, Christian people. We don't. We don't fuck until we've only had we, sex. We need twice. to have a kid. Yeah, exactly. Because we have two kids. We push pushing the beds together. That's where yeah, that old that, saying he's comes from. Like, he's into it. He's like, oh, I didn't know I could feel this way in a long time. Yeah, yeah. He. <laughs> so one of my favorite lines is when when Carl's walking up. He's like, "Look at the wood I just got for him." <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <he> just, <laughs> and I love it that he's like, he's like, "Oh, huh? well, I, uh, it's like it's, she's just like, do you like it?" And somebody else comes up and is like, uh, ma'am, do you want to dance? He's like, <laughs> yeah. hell no. Hell no. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Hell no. <laughs> I just needed a second to process it. I do yeah. like when uh, Crawl goes up to sing, too. It's, it's been country, you know, Brooks and Dunn this whole time, you mm-hmm. know, John Denver kind of shit. And then Crawl gets up there to sing, and all of a sudden the guitar player has a wall and won't lay <laughs> off of it. Yeah. The 90s. Of course. <laughs> you know? I, I, don't, I don't like that, though. I don't like this 90s idea of, like, yes, this small town, that's been having the same band play their dance for 30 years, <laughs> yep. playing the same songs, is going to like be happy that that guy got up there and just started going, started spouting profanity yeah. on the microphone. They're not going to be like, yeah! like I, I hate that cliche in the 90s. Ooh, of like, inject ooh, something new and different into our lives. We've been wanting this forever! <laughs> yeah. Like in Cena Man in the, in the uh, bar that they hide out in. Yes. Like he does like a, a choreographed dance with everybody. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, it's just, come on. They don't want that. If, no. if, I went in, if I went into like the small town bar, um, like if we went to, we'll say a little town like called... Like Salem, Iowa. Okay. okay, that's got it. That's got about I don't know six hundred and fifty people in it. Uh, if we went in there and we said, "Hey guys, we're the Confused Breakfast. Let's get some t- tunes pumping." And and where's the Coors Banquet? And it's like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yes, it's <laughs> like, not gonna it's happen. not gonna happen. It's not, I don't care how <laughs> endearing you are. That would have taken hours for him to finally get around to them. Yeah, yeah. But they're like, man, we got to move on. Yeah, so ninety like, minute movie. Let's go. Let's go. It's not like they saw him and, and they were like, "Oh, spin doctors." <laughs> we know that shit can't be wrong. Uh, this is a blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes <laughs> and try to keep up. <laughs> we can't all be back to the future. Well, nah, I can't. I do. I do have a thing though. It's kind of a rule, I guess, that you can gain from this movie. It's it's a life lesson of of, of understand this and know this. If this ever happens to you, that you'll have the right answer. Okay. Never. Ever under any circumstance accept an offer of a bachelor party from the guy you stole your fiance from? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, like, like if if you stole your fiance Katie from someone, yeah. and that person was like, "I'd like to offer you a bachelor party," no hard feelings, right? You never accept that offer, right? You okay. say, yes, you, you say, oh, hey, um, actually, the people in my wedding are throwing it for me already but i really appreciate and i'm sorry you can't that was a nice offer but i already have one that's you, it you know the girl you've Never been dating accept. for okay. 10 years uh who yeah. you just found out yesterday is actually dumping you to be engaged to me right on a whim 
Yeah, yeah. Essentially, I think, I think we sh- I think we could be cool with that. We're good now. We're good now. And, and mm-hmm. in fact, I want to throw him a party because of that fact. Mm. Listen, I've grown up a lot since yesterday. He, yeah. <laughs> It's he got to fuck her before I did, and I understand. <laughs> I get it. I, yeah. I get it, man. You're actually kind of a cool guy. <laughs> wow. Wow. You got, yeah, wow. You're actually pretty wow. cool. Wow. You're really winning over everybody in this town, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, not me, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's just a life lesson for you guys. Uh, and then, yeah, then you get to the next day, too. You got this. Molly even made fun of this. My wife, she goes, oh, they're going on a big, big, super awesome fishing trip, huh? To just a pond in someone's backyard. <laughs> it's like the they just walked across the street to a pond or something yeah. like that. I mean, exactly. hang on, guys. Let me make you lunch. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be gone for hours. <laughs> all she does. I'm gonna make you lunch. <laughs> that woman just makes a lot of lunch. <laughs> Put some extra mayonnaise on it. Yeah. The bread and bologna they go through, man. Who wants extra mayo? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will she say got that, it. Hey, the sandwiches that Crawl makes though for him and uh and and uh what's what's their brother's name? Zach. Zach. It's look like some pretty Dude. damn good sandwiches, Fuck, yeah. bro. I thought it was all one. I know. Before he gave the other one in. Uh the the fact though, the here's here's my here's my problem. Um what the fuck is happening on that computer? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Where did these alien symbols come from? No one knows. On that computer? And what's going on with it? It's just error, error, error. And he's just, he then he types in like alien language code from Independence Day into this computer. And then he's like, he's like, okay. Oh, I just, I just rerouted your data entry hardware. And then I, I juiced your. I juiced your RAM, <laughs> your rotary girder, your spa- your space, your spatial RAM, so that w- and and then I and then I tweaked tweaked your goose on your fuck. I don't know what it. There's nothing. This is ninety two. Nothing about when this, did your guys. family have your first computer? Uh, ninety ninety five probably because of Windows ninety five. I'm just saying, like they could do whatever they wanted. Computers weren't even going to be a thing. Like. No one will ever know what a computer is. We'll just do some weird shit and All that, make it interesting. It's like he does that thing. It does the um, like st- old Star Blaster video game yep. thing. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, yep. Oh, everything's great. It does the ending to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> it's like going through like time and space. You know? it's like, and then he does a code. And it's like, everything's fine. He's like, oh, you're just like an old hacker like me. It's like, good. That That's never brought up again. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> Nobody there's not gives much a of, we don't shit. get much of Zach at all. No, no we really I kind of wish we'd get more. He, he loves boobs and uh, being a, a sexual predator and computers. And, that's and he's like he's know. like way into his sister, I think. He likes his sister and wants a to a like. Lot, a lot more. Than he, he does should. the uh, to yeah. his sister. Like, yeah, he, and he, he he's raiding her underwear out of her bag in the yeah. beginning, and then and then he's even asking Crawl about uh, about <laughs> he's even asking Crawl about he's like you touch my sister's boobs. It's like why are you why are you interested in that? Let's not. He's like don't talk about your sister that way because not because it's rude because it's f- fucking creepy. It's really fucking weird. That yeah, you're doing that. it is a bit creepy though. I do. I'll tell you what. I think. The world deserves a modern day companion flick with Patrick Renna and Pauly Shore. I agree with you. I would love that. I, I don't know what it is about those two. Like those are two of the most iconic people from the nineties that are still doing good things that are good people that I just want to see them sort of have that thing where they just they get together in a good project. It, it, it feels right to me. I Patrick know. Renna, Paul is sure. You guys want a movie? Let's do a movie. Let's do a movie. Let's, Let's do, do it right now, please. Um, I don't even care what it is. I've just been following. Uh, I've been following like even like Patrick Renna just on social media, and like so all the fun. stuff that he does is amazing. Yeah, it's all and it's very wholesome. He's yeah. one of the best, man. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Patrick Renna, come be on our podcast. Yeah. All right, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Apple sponsors. We just talked about computers, Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, sponsor. dude. Like, oh, Mac. Uh. Uh, Wonder Bread. Get yeah. on, get on board, huh? Yeah, with mayonnaise. Yeah. And, and so, what about this bachelor party? Then, like, this is really the if if the first time you're seeing this movie, this is where you get like the inkling, sort of, of like the bad stuff, right? I mean, yeah. like dude. it's it's super weird, man. They're 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 date rape drugging him and Tracy. Just like this is cool and normal. I would like and it, no one cares. It came up. I for, I totally forgot this happened. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I whoa. know, right? <laughs> was like, as a kid, them? you're like, I don't understand. And like, not even drugging just him. I thought like she might be like onto it like into like it's I very easy to think she's on she's yeah. on right. the whole thing in on it with them you know uh 
where she just wants to be sexy that night. No problem with that. She she just wanted like she was probably in on it to up to that point. True, but she was literally a pawn in Travis's little game. Like, about hey, why don't doing you this. come dance for the new guy? Yeah, town, like you know? hey, come and come and do like a dance at the bar that you work at or whatever. Yeah. and uh, and it's man. This takes turns really dark really <laughs> fast. Up. All of a sudden, this movie's like, huh? Isn't yeah, you're that, just like, Ugh. isn't that like a felony? Like, uh, yeah, any, like I drugging hope so. anybody, <laughs> it's like a felony, right? Yeah, oh, and like God. stealing their car and yeah, and trespassing and like, there's a lot of shit they could have really gotten Travis and Theo on. Yeah, hundred percent. I wish they would have. Yeah, I know. Like this is a it's a pretty messed up scene. Uh, he he dumps those pills into that beer, <laughs> like I mean, a like, lot of. Them. I do love how he like subtly rubs it into. He's like, uh, to Rebecca, your ex and my fiance, my new fiance, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just you're kind of like, damn, that's dick Fuck, move right man. there. <laughs> <laughs> and like Travis drinks is like, yeah, yeah, he's he's to be <laughs> <laughs> enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> ugh. Another thing I wanted to bring up, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Have you guys ever been in a position in your life where you've been so excited by a woman that uh, you saw her breast and you made the and you went and made the noise? <laughs> Craig has. Craig has. <laughs> well, never you picked that up on the microphone, but Craig's boner hit the table. Yeah, it did. It popped right up. Uh, Jesus Christ! Called wood on wood contact. Yeah, he broke it. Oh no. <laughs> Um, <laughs> to answer your question, I don't think uh, I don't think I've ever been okay, that way. good. I've never good. felt it nece- necessarily to do that. You know what? New punchable face. That guy. Yeah, I'm an, I'm down. The guy with the glasses who's got a cowboy hat and the first person that uh, like Tiffany Amber is like walks by and like kind of <laughs> dancing for and he does that and you're just like no. Nope. Bah! Yeah, let's punch that. And then guy. maybe you do that w- in a fun way to your like fiance or significant other, girlfriend, whatever you know. Like while you guys are just hanging out by yourselves, but yeah. not like a, a a stripper or like a person yeah. who's just dancing for you. I do you. believe you get kicked out of a strip club for doing that. I think yeah. so. I right? think it's uh, just on principle alone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Absolutely. Drugging somebody's no good either. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> So let's end this. Scene five, everybody. The next morning, Becca finds Crawl and Tracy and calls off the wedding. Crawl leaves to head back to L.A. while Tracy finds her car seat suspiciously left all the way back and discovers a bottle of pills underneath it. After picking up Crawl, they visit the Warner house to confront Travis and Theo. After Travis and Theo leave, Tracy is invited to sit with the Warners and Crawl and Becca perhaps begin a real relationship. Hey. Can we um, Can we just make... I, I, need to, I need to make this point like right away. Um, is... Is Tracy in this movie like apparently just the ultimate male fantasy? I mean, I guess, right? I, it's she she doesn't there's really nothing to her whatsoever in no. this movie. You don't think so? No, no, no. Uh, sorry to her character. To nothing to her character. Well, I, okay, so they graduate high school. She has uh, ambitions and aspirations to go to New York, right? Did She's just got to save that? up. Yeah, I don't she says, that. "I thought you were going to New York." It's like, "Yeah, I'm still going to go, but I got to save up some money to go." Yeah, and so that's when they're in the uh, 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 clothing store. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, and she's so she's talking about it like that, but hey, I'm working in the bar, and overall. She's pretty, pretty fun-loving uh, and almost wholesome, wholesome girl. She actually kind of is. And then, and then you think about it, like she drives a Trans Am, it's fucking, fucking badass. and you're just like, awesome. this is your car. And then, like, she's just up for a good time. She's, she's thinks crawl is cool. She's peak. She's my peak '90s crush. I mean, without a doubt. I peaked it several times watching this movie. God. Yeah, I, I like no, I I God. totally I agree with you, man. Like I I think there she could have been just like a ah she shows your boobs a little bit to, and then to some people who go blah, blah, blah. exactly then, you know and that's kind of it. But like no, I think they kind of flesh her character out. You feel bad for her. A hundred percent. What's her she, What's her home life? I don't know if she, maybe yeah. she has much of a home. Not life. bad for not bad for her because of that or, or like her choices or like you know I don't care. Do, the do whatever you want. The situation that she goes exactly. through though that she's is, put through with that this honestly guy. she is she's put through this and and she. Like Tracy is not a bad person. No, no, in any sense, right? She's in love with the wrong people. Uh, correct, and and she gets put through this by these guys. Like y- you think about, okay, she's not recovering from this like immediately, even though she found <laughs> out about it. 
like and and like they figured out this mystery and you're thinking to your like i was just thinking to myself i'm like uh, i i hope she's got a lot of support yeah. in sitting down with this family and i don't want to yeah. get dark but like there's not there's no indication of like at this point she's got to wonder what even happened yeah which is so sad i mean like to not even know what happened happened from for what a ten hour period of time, yeah, and to yeah. be transported and moved around where you don't even know what happened, like there's there's going to be some trauma there to to be like, well, what did happen? What mm-hmm. did happen? And I don't like that. I hate at that. all. That's terrifying. Think Especially about that piece of shit, Theo. I know. Fuck that guy. Somebody real big had to be be in that driver's I, seat. I did really like that detail mm-hmm. because she gets in her car and she's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And she like moves her seat up. I like that a lot. Like Think that was if, really uh, smart for the filmmakers just to be like, hey, like, this is what's yeah, going let's on. Let's leave yeah. a detail here. Yeah. Let's leave a break. Maybe crumb. just finding the pills maybe wasn't enough. Yeah. Right. But but like, oh God. We've all done I that. Think finding the pills was like just a like a soap opera dead ringer kind yes. of thing. Well, you know? and I was I was gonna say, think about if she like on that drive home or wherever she is going, that she doesn't find those pills and like doesn't see them right away, and she's just going home to like ruminate on this you're like oh yeah yeah it's a it, thank god she found those things to like <laughs> yeah. know what's going to, to to like you say catch this dead ringer of what's going on yeah that's like the scariest part of this movie <laughs> for me and it's terrifying and travis is right back to it well but, well now that we know crawl sucks uh well i think it's time to get married again yes i'd like you're to like, take sh- this time and uh, propose to this girl ding, 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 again ding. what the fuck what do i have here what do i have a dead horse uh, <laughs> all right let's be all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right all right hey family yeah. you know me right we uh, all love each other for some yeah. reason i need to marry this woman or i will die uh. still again i still wish there would have been some reason like tell me that Tell me that their family's worth millions yeah. and that he wants to be a part of it. Or tell me that that there's just there has to be this reason why me and her get together. Right. There's got to be a reason why he is so stuck and there's on just this. there's not. It's just like, oh, whatever. You're right. It's just because she, they were together and... It's like he's got this weird thing to prove. Like we all know, yeah. Carla. We all know Becca's a very attractive woman, but they, yeah. they but they don't even play it out to be like she's the hottest girl that's ever lived in this town. They yeah. don't even they don't even like go that far to or to be like, dude, oh my god, yeah, this is she's so hot and unattainable. No. <laughs> yeah. Like I have to get her. So yeah. It's just like well, whatever. We've been dating. We've been dating for. A I've long gotten time. over over the pants hand jobs for like seven years, and it's time to get a real. If, one. I, if, it's I, don't, if I don't get to actually like, if I don't actually get to bang her. Then I'm really gonna be upset. My life's ruined, man. Yeah, she, I got she nothing else. I work at the co-op, and that's it. <laughs> she owes it to me. She owes me. Do you know man? how many times I've taken her to Texas Roadhouse? <laughs> <laughs> that's got expensive shit. around here. Yeah, she takes both the butter cups, and I get pissed. God, ah, damn it. I'm not doing this country club crap anymore. It's <laughs> we, too expensive. Hey, we did not mention yet, though, Mason Adams, who plays the the grandpa. Oh, yeah. yes. Uh, do you know him from anything? Oh, I mean, I, I know his face for sure. Uh, I, I I read something that like Lane Smith and him died like the same year. Dang. I think it was. He he's he's an old school actor. I yeah. mean, he's been in lots and lots of stuff from way before our time. But the way I know him, and I always mention this around Christmas time, the night they saved Christmas, just the one of the original terrible Hallmark Christmas movies that my family somehow watched all the time. He's in that, and that's how I know him. But I love his voice. Yeah. Something about his voice is just so calming to me. <laughs> and like it's just there. And I like the way he treats uh Becca. Yeah. Like the niceties of that, but also like it takes him a while to come around on crawl too. I, <laughs> I don't know. I like Mason Adams. One of my favorite things was like when they came home from the party or the, the dance or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh they they almost kiss and he's right there and she goes to bed and he comes up to the porch and looks at him, he's like Oh shit! <laughs> it's he wants really a little good. wood with him. Don't mind me. No one else does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just cool. Like I do like the kind of wrap up of this, and like it's cheeseball '90s at its finest. But everybody now talks like talks like fucking crawl. Munch on some grinding. <laughs> Lane Smith, dude. Him doing him doing that. 
Oh, is that the peak of Lane Smith's career it's, for you? It might be the peak of his career, but it's the peak of some cringe for sure. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Oh man, it's like I love you though, man. You really, you really committed. The script to called it. for it. I yeah. had to do it. I had to do it. It had to do it. And but even the grandpa's talking like that yeah. and telling him like. Oh, I wish I could remember exactly what he says in it, but he's just like, no, like we're, he's like, we thought you were cool, but they, they, uh, with our buddies and this, like that. Yeah. And he's just going all full crawl. And uh, I like that he doesn't play it up as much as Lane Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I really like that more, but, uh, but it's fine. It, it's, it's totally fine. There's a formula to this movie. Some, for some reason you're okay with it. Yeah. You're okay with the formula. You're okay with how, you know, predictable it kind of is and how it wraps up. So what happens after this? Oh, yeah, they don't last. I mean, they, they go to school, right? Yeah. I mean, they have to go back to California. Do they make it back to Christmas break? I think they do. Yeah. You, you think they're like, together I think they're in, in a relationship? Okay. I think I think they try it out, but it doesn't work out, and I think I, I want to hope that they still become good friends. Ah. The yeah, family I think, loves him, and the, so they want him back. It's like he he still continues to come back for holidays as a friend, as a friend. Okay, yeah, I like that. They did bone once, but then they, like that, it, it, it felt they weird. Realized it was kind of weird after. They're like, yeah, that's like, kind of weird. I don't, I don't really understand this. Yeah, you you have a hammock in your dorm room, and there's we really can't sleep on that. That's not. It is not conducive. That's not conducive to yeah, a good night's no. sleep. So I don't. I don't really, and I don't like do, boning in my room. So maybe we just call it good. Yeah. 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 Maybe we yeah. just don't. They're friends. Yeah, I think they end up as friends. I end really up don't. As they started. Yeah. I don't think that they. I don't think they end up together. Okay. I okay. really don't. I don't know. I think it's kind of sad. Well, before we do, <laughs> before we do end this, we got to consult the Jarrett Layoff Confused Breakfast Actor Database. Do you guys know of any movie we've done? What actor from this movie has been in the most movies that we have done? Um. Nah. Paulie Shore and Lane Smith are two. You got a you got a Paulie Shore and Lane Smith are in three actually. Three, okay. Yes, you got Paulie Shore, Lane Smith, and Adam Goldberg in three. That's right. Okay. There's a surprise winner of the of the first spot. Is it? Is it Flea? Ooh. Is it Flea? Everyone. Ooh, Flea. It could be because Flea was in Point Break. Yes. He. Oh my God! What else was he? Flea in? was not in Point Break. No, that was Anthony Kiedis. Yeah, Anthony Kiedis. Kiedis. Yeah. I thought I thought Flea was too. Nope. So <laughs> Flea was in Big Lebowski, Back to the Future Two, Lane Smith, Mighty Ducks, Red Dawn, Paulie Short, Encino Man, Biodome. We're counting Biodome. The winner though of this one is Brendan Fraser. Wow. Because Duh. think about it, you got Jesus. Encino Man, Mummy, The Mummy, Airheads, and then this Link cameo in yep. this movie. Yep. Damn. Yeah. So that has to be number one. Love that. Okay. So that's his fourth uh, movie that uh, Brendan Fraser has been in. We got to get more of that. Brendan Fraser, huh? Fraser. Fraser. Academy Award winner. Oh, sorry, Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Thank you. You got to think about Flea's filmography though. Is it made me think about that? He's been in a lot of role. Like he he's could, never a starring role or anything, but he's just a guy in a movie. He could end up being on this podcast, Mount Rushmore, just because of his small role. Well, here's a couple other ones. I love his role in this movie too. Yeah. It's pretty like, good. Will we get to Back to the Future Three? Yep, there's one. You pick. Will it, we get? I stick it. Will we get to the Chase? Did anyone ever see the Chase? I love the Chase. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll have to get to that. Suburbia. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got a lot of roles. We might get him up on top of that thing Damn. eventually well boys we've dissected this with a modern eye it's time to give it a modern day rating we're gonna start with the age age what do you think about this one man you know what so i wasn't thrilled about doing this movie um to be completely honest i wasn't i wasn't thrilled about it it's never been like a big Polly shore hit for me um if if we were like talking about Polly shore movies i think um in the army now is like my favorite really yeah okay honestly i really do um but this was never one of them for me. That being said, rewatching this and for some reason, especially around like this time of year, like the Thanksgiving little vibes that it does give off, um, I actually really enjoyed it. And like I, I felt like it had like for as formulaic as the movie is, it was still it's still a lot of fun to watch. And I don't know if it's all because of Polly Shore, but I think a good amount of it has to do with um all of the casting of the movie because there's a lot of, there's a lot of great, um, you know, peak nineties actors and actresses in this movie. So, um, the story is fun enough. It gets dark at one point, like that. You're just like, man, that's super messed up. There's still some really funny jokes and still some things I still actually laugh out loud at. So 
you know, genuinely, I I did really enjoy watching the movie. I don't think it's like crazy up there. I feel like, I feel like, <sighs> Polly Shore movies are like Papa John's Pizza, where it's like it's only ever going to get as good as it ever will get. Yeah. Um. And so that being said, I think that Son in Law is, um, a six point. A s- no, <laughs> two seconds there. It's it's a six point three four. A, 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 a seven point three four. Sorry. Oh damn! I, I, what are I you almost, talking about? I almost messed up. Whoa! There. A seven point three four. Okay, Sean. What about you, man? Uh, yeah, I agreed. Uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed rewatching this movie. I laughed out laughed out loud several goddamn times. I really think this is Polly Shore's best work. I really love him in this. Um, the the heartfelt areas, the the ridiculous, stupid, stony, just his character areas are great. Carla Gugino, I will watch in anything yeah. ever. Lane Smith is amazing. Obviously, Patrick Renna is a saint. Um, yeah, I I I think it's a good holiday movie. To, like we even talk about, you know, the kind of the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. It's a, I mean, obviously, Home. it's all about family. It's all about getting like uh, this person who, you know, is. Uh, really not a, a traditional member of your family into your family and accepting them. You know, I think that's what it's all about. Um, I'm a sucker for this movie. It's a 7.5. I love it. 7.5. I, there's the thing for me ab- about this. Like I, it brings up a, a fact of the matter of like how Pauly Shore came. He went up so fast in fame and did what he did best. Cause everyone asked him to do what he did best. But then, then everybody turned on him. Yeah, and we're like, Paulie Shore, oh, no. yeah, Paulie Shore. He's doesn't know what he's doing. You know, it's so not even funny. And I, and it feels, it feels terrible to me to be able to go back and watch all these Paulie Shore movies and be like, we had Paulie Shore in his peak. Yeah, and we got to experience that. And it's so sad that that he sort of had that downward c- career tra- trajectory after that because I hope and I'm feeling this almost resurgence, hopefully, yeah. of Pauly Shore where maybe he gets his Brendan Fraser moment of oh, like, yeah. Pauly Shore is a treasure and this movie is dog shit without him. That we've, we've said that many times where if you take one person out of it, it's not even a movie that's on this. It's very true. I, I, like, Pauly Shore is this movie. And I and and I I'm so happy that that like I got to experience Paul Shore when he was there. That that with that being said though, I, I it's not my favorite Paul Shore movie just because of the overall like it's just a, it's a whatever story. I don't yeah. know. It wasn't always my Paul Shore movie. Rewatch was great, and it reminds me that I I want more Paul Shore in, in my life. And I and I think that if we thought the way Pauly Shore thought back then, if we all acted the way that he acted, like the world would be a better place. It, yeah. It really would, <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Just True. enjoy yourself. Be happy. And so I like over on the movie, just because of Pauly Shore, this is pulling it up to a six for me. Um it, it's a it's a fine movie. It's great on the holidays, but Pauly Shore is this movie. Everything else is kind of blah. So for us, guys, that is a six point nine five on the grand scale of things. Let's see where that lands on our modern day rating. Six point nine five is going to be fairly decent. That's going to pop into number ninety two. That's going to be right below the Burbs, right above Grumpy Old Men. Is wow. how we feel that movie. I felt. like that. I feel like that's great, right? I think that's good. Yeah, solid. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. We're going to move into the holiday vibes a little bit. We're going to hit Scrooged, and we're going to follow that up with Last Action Hero. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Speaking of, we did Grumpy Old Men. That's a fun Thanksgiving movie that's got the vibes that you want this time of year. Go hit it. It's crazy to think about like the movies that we did a year ago. Like They feel like they were a month ago. Yeah, It's kind of crazy, guys. Um, So make sure you go back and check out the catalog for all those awesome movies that we've been doing or have done in the past. Uh, we really appreciate it while you're scrolling back through those on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify that you uh, drop us a rating and review. Write us a review. We love being able to read through them. Um, drop us five stars on Spotify wherever you're listening to our show, guys. We really do appreciate it. Check us out on social media. Make sure you're following along at Confused Breakfast, just wherever, right? Search for Confused Breakfast on that social media platform. And by all means, if you have not come and checked us out on YouTube to get all the funny little nuances and physical comedy that we're doing here in the studio, please check it out on YouTube, guys. 
confusedbreakfast.com. You can get some of our merch. You can get some shirts. You can get some coosies. Uh, you can get some yeah. buttons. You can get some hats. Yeah, that looks like it. Um, go to our same damn website and see the ratings of the movies we've ever done. See AJ's ratings. See Sean's ratings. That's me. And see Mike's ratings and see the ratings of the show overall. Goodbye. I love you. Happy Thanksgiving. Give us a call on our voicemail, 319-804-9596. Join patreon.com slash confused breakfast for bonus episodes, voting on upcoming movies, just being an all-around cool person. We are produced by Upload Media Group in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We got Craig on the controls. Thankful Thank for you, yeah. Craig. We're thankful for Craig thankful and for Upload. Thankful for Craig. And Lo- not so much Logs, but just in general, <laughs> the company, because we know he won't hear this because we'll, our friends don't listen to our podcast. No, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> calling him out again. We'll talk Talk about Yule, Yule Logs when uh, it's Yule Christmas. Logs. Yeah. God yeah. damn. Damn it, I'm good at this. <laughs> Learn more at uploadmediagroup.com, and we are proudly on the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Learn more at cloud10.fm. That is it for us. Happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye. Deuces. Goodbye. Goodbye.